Hey guys, it's Kendra, and welcome to my channel. If you guys are new here, obviously my name is Kendra. I'm a student at Athens Tech. I'm studying radiology. I'm currently enrolled in three classes this semester, fall semester 2022. This video of which has to go along with my first semester seminar class that I am taking with Miss Archer. If you don't know what first semester seminar is, it's basically an introduction to college. Honestly, it's showed me the big differences between college and high school. So in this class, we've talked a lot about effect of studying, you know, note taking, um, grid, personality, learning styles, uh, six areas of adjustment, which is what we'll get into in just a moment. There are 12 chapters of this course, and this video is going to contain seven out of the 12. I'm really getting ready for my sister's senior night, so I'm going to be doing my makeup in the process. Chapter one, question one, we have the six adjustment areas. Which area was the most challenging for you and why? And how might you continue to improve this area for me social adjustment is a big problem mainly because i i have social anxiety i don't like to get up and talk in front of people um when i was in high school i hated when teachers would like be like raise your hand or i'm just gonna call on somebody randomly and then my like it would be me that got caught on um i don't like talking in front of people i i love making new friends but i don't like starting the conversations if that makes sense so social adjustment in college is definitely going to be i would have to say the biggest thing for me and most challenging I feel like i can definitely improve this by gradually working on asking questions during class because that's one of my bigger areas that <laughs> I just have like a big fear of sounding stupid that's why i get scared to ask questions because i don't want to get looked at like i'm stupid and i know i'm not stupid but if i don't ask questions i'll stay stuck and confused and that's what i did all throughout high school i would just ask my friend i was just scared to ask the teacher because i don't want them to look at me like i was stupid even though i'm not but it's always better to ask questions and so i feel like if i gradually start asking more questions in class that is a way that i can improve in this area question number two was which athens technical college resource have you used or do you plan to use in the near future before i have used the bookstore and that's it i plan on using the library because it seems like a quiet place in there and usually when I get out of class, I just come straight home and I do all my assignments. But it's really loud here because there's a lot of people at my house. So I, it's definitely going to be more beneficial for me to use the library to study. And so that's what I plan on doing in the future. Question number three was, what unwritten role are you working to improve? Personally, I am working on better note taking and reading all the material before class and like through all of it not just skimming over it and everything i'm working on trying to just be better at reading the entire thing typically when i was in high school at least i would just read over what i was going to be tested over because when you're in high school you have literally six to eight hours a day to just go over all this stuff maybe like 45 minutes to an hour per class and the high school teachers were a little bit more lenient on when late work was turned in. That's not the case in college. That's why I say I'm trying to <clears throat> improve on reading all of the assigned material before class. We're moving on to chapter two, which is a lot about grit, your learning style, and your personality type. So for question number one, we have what does grit mean to you? What are some ways you are increasing your grit and who is your grit partner? Grit to me means to never give up and to always keep trying until you succeed. In other words, basically just keeping the motivation is what it means to me. I increase this literally, I take the people that I have in my life and especially if they're important to me and I'm like, do I wanna let these people down? no so 
looking at these people who motivate me and who are always there for me and who inspire me always keeps the motivation up for me and that's how I always have the motivation to just like trust me I hate coming home and doing schoolwork but I do it because I know my parents want to see me succeed and I want to see myself succeed and I don't want to let myself nor my parents down that's what keeps me motivated and my grip partners are my mom and my dad because like I said they see the potential in me and I know that they want to see me succeed just as much as I want to see myself succeed Question number two was describe your bark learning style preference and how can you maximize your learning style preference in and out of class. So know what bark is. It's an acronym. Each letter means has a different word. V is visual, A is oral, R is reading and writing, and then K is kinesthetic. My bark learning style was kinesthetic. If you don't know what that is, it's basically just hands-on. I can't learn from reading. I can't learn from writing things down. I personally, I just learn from doing hands-on activities, you know, doing projects, stuff like this. Um, Cause I'm also, I can also learn from hearing things. So like watching videos, you know, lectures, like hearing people talk, like those things help me learn better than just reading material and writing it down. Since I was a very kinesthetic and oral learner, ways I can maximize these two learning styles, like for kinesthetic, I can make a poster, make a brochure, or something like this for oral, I can make a video like I'm doing now for an assignment. Literally is what I'm doing now. Next question that we have for chapter two is what is your, what is your four letter Myers-Briggs personality type and how does your personality impact your studying and learning? My four letters were INFJ, and since I am a very hands-on kind of person when it comes to learning, um, I can use my personality to do something we've been talking about recently, which is in a later chapter is creative thinking. This personality type has a lot to do with creative thinking. Personally, I'm a very creative person, so having a creative mind plus being a hands-on learner, you know, I come with all sorts of things to make to go along with different activities for my class. Moving on to chapter three, for the first question we have, are there any areas of your time management that need improvement? If so, how do you plan to improve upon these? I am a very bad procrastinator. Um, oh, I just got my hair soaked with that. I did not mean to do that. I'm a very bad procrastinator when it comes to a lot of things but I mean I've been pretty good about it with school like I haven't been procrastinating as much as I usually do I feel like in order to improve my procrastination I just have to get rid of any and all distractions like here at my house it's very loud very much distractions going on it would be more beneficial for me to study at the library or somewhere that's not here <laughs> Question number two is consider something right now that you may be procrastinating. Identify the root cause of your procrastination and how can you manage it? Recently, I have been a big procrastinator on cleaning my room. It is extremely messy. It looks like a tornado has been through here. Typically, the reason I procrastinate this is because I'm always on my phone. Like, I'm literally always on my phone, always on TikTok. I'm surprised. I have been able to get all my assignments turned in on time because of how bad and how much I am usually on my phone. I actually recently set myself a screen time so I can go to bed at a decent time. So my phone, all my apps on my phone shut off at 12 because I want them to. The last question isn't really a question, it's just telling me to update on all my goals that I've set for myself. So my academic goal, phenomenal. I have well i only i'm only taking three classes and two of my classes i do have a's the other one there's not a grade there because <laughs> he doesn't put anything in yet my my career goal i have no update for you because i haven't even started my program of study yet so but i'm working on it we have started to work towards these goals my personal goal which was i think to lose weight um next question <laughs> financial goal I don't even remember what my financial goal was, but 
I feel like I'm pretty do doing pretty. Do I feel like I'm doing I feel like I'm doing pretty good with my money and my financial stuff. Finally, moving on to chapter four. Question number one: What is your program of study and credential level? Studying radiology, associate's degree. How many credit hours or number of courses are required for graduation, and when do you plan to graduate? You have to have 80 to 81 credit hours. Honestly, I kind of want to graduate within the next two years is when I plan to graduate. It really just depends on how my classes go. This question was provided brief description of why you chose this major and what you plan to do with it. I chose this major because mainly I want to focus on ultrasounds. I think x-rays are cool too, but I want to focus on ultrasounds. I chose this major because... The ultrasound aspect i i, I want to do ultrasounds on babies or like on pregnant women that was my my focus um however i don't mind doing x-rays as well but i like i said i'm focused on ultrasounds question number three is if it is a competitive program describe any pre preliminary requirements for selection basically what do you have to have what do you have to do to get into your program you have to take the t's exam and pass it with a 70 or higher maybe it was an 85 it was in that area 70 to 85 or higher you have to have 80 to 81 credit hours and then you have to pass all your classes with a c or higher i totally forgot i was supposed to be doing my makeup so i'm gonna finish that Moving on to chapter five um question number one was how do you take an active role in learning then it says you may want to reflect on how college is different from high school and how you are adjusting to take an active role in learning, I feel like that you personally have to set aside this time to goof off. Like, it's important is that you're getting all your stuff done, getting getting it all turned in on time, and you're putting forth the effort to learn, basically. You're in control, you're taking action, and you're trying to learn. Okay, so I just got back from my sister's senior night, so I'm going to finish this video up. Question number two for chapter five was, what effective reading, studying, and note-taking strategies do you use? Honestly, I don't really have any strategies. When I study for certain things, I will cover up the answer and like read the question. If it's math, for example, I'll cover up the answer, get the problems, and then I'll work it out on my own. And if I work it out and I get stuck, I'll look at the answer and compare it to what I got. Just basically practice test is kind of what I do when I study. Question number three was how many hours on average each week do you devote to reading and studying? Or at least when I was in high school, <laughs> nothing. I would never come home, I would never study, I would never do anything outside of school. However, now that I'm in college and it's this drastic change, like every single day I'll spend anywhere from an hour and a half to three or four hours just reading material for class. Um, studying, getting my assignments done. So for chapter six, question number one is describe when and where you study. Is it effective? If not, what adjustments need to be made? Well, I study in this room right here at this desk right behind me. It is both effective and not effective. It just really depends on the day. I have a lot of people in my house that can usually be really loud here. Those days would be days that I would need to go and like study at the library or somewhere else that's not here. Having a lot of people equals so many distractions. Question number two is discuss an up upcoming exam you're preparing for and how specifically do you prepare? Only like exams I have coming up on my finals and they're not for weeks so I'm not really worried about that. If I did have an up upcoming exam. I would honestly prepare myself by like getting in a quiet environment, studying thoroughly, like not just skimming through the material. I would study. I would get a decent amount of sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep at a decent time, wake up at a decent time. And for question number three, what are some ways to reduce test anxiety? One big one I feel like is important is relaxation. Clearing your mind from all the stress is very important because if you're, if your mind is so full of stress, like you're so stressed about taking this test and failing it, you're not going to be focused on passing at all. 
you're just going to be focused on the fact that you're stressed and it's going to mess you up mentally to take this test. So I feel like relaxing is a big thing. Going to bed at a decent time and getting the right amount of sleep is very important. Um, eating a proper meal, honestly, um, whatever kind of different things help you clear your mind, do that. Study efficiently. Moving on to our last chapter, which is chapter seven. This one is about analytical, creative, and critical thinking. For question number one, we have, in what ways could creative thinking help you become a better student? And what are some ways to improve creative thinking? I would say to become a better student, thinking of like really good questions to ask during lessons being taught. If you have an assignment, thinking of good ways to do that assignment just thinking of like the different ways that you could do the assignment and thinking of the different ways that you could just present it maybe like that would make you become a better student what are some ways to improve creative thinking to improve creative thinking i feel like you can pitch ideas out to people you know take some criticism if you have an idea and you don't know if it's good enough or not tell somebody about it and if they like it then they like it and you know i just i feel like that helps having criticism on your opinions and your ideas can help you as a person become better at thinking and coming up with different ideas i'm so sorry but just please ignore the dogs in the back oh for question number two is how my analytical thinking be used in your career field or class that you are taking realizing any setbacks and failures and not giving up if I mess up on something, make a mistake because I'm human. We are all human. We all we all make a mistake. Realizing that you make a mistake, approaching it in a good manner, finding a solution to the mistake. These are all good ways of how analytical thinking can be used in honestly any career. And for our last question is which Athens Technical College library resource have you used or do you plan to use in the near future? To answer this question, personally, I have not used anything yet. I plan on using the study rooms because first of all very beneficial to me because sometimes studying here is not the way to go i pl also plan on using the technology nest because i saw those 3d printers and even if it's not for an assignment even if it's just for a hobby or something to do it looks so cool and i'm so excited to try it galileo is another one okay so i'm getting ready to wrap this video up so i have three more questions First one is, what specific lessons did you find most beneficial so far and why? I would have to say chapter three, where we were talking about time management and procrastination. <laughs> I say that because I'm not the best person when it comes to time management, and I'm the worst person when it comes to procrastination. So definitely talking about those two things really kind of like changing my mindset a little bit, and I'm currently trying to work on that. Question number two. Were there any areas you feel should have been covered or more time devoted to so far? No, I don't. I think that they all had a, did a decent amount of time spent on them. Last question, also my favorite question. What advice would you give to a new student entering college? Please look at your due dates. <laughs> I've had all my assignments turned in on time, every single one of them, except for one in math. It was homework three. And I thought it was due, like, I think it was, I thought it was this going to be due on the 16th. It was due on the 9th. So always pay attention to your deadlines. No procrastinating. Get rid of all your distractions. Get away from any distractions that you may have. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. And with that, peace out.